I want to just share his history with you, and then I wanted to um, share just real quickly if I can find this here. I had a listing pulled up, and I want to try to share with you some of the books that Cathcart has written. Just bear with me for just a second. So Cathcart wrote, obviously, the two-volume Baptist History Encyclopedia, and you can order that, by the way, through uh, Calvary Publishing in Lansing, Michigan, I believe, still sells that. And it's hardback. That is an excellent, excellent resource. Then Baptist Patriots in the American Revolution. Um, he was kind of ahead of his time on that. You'll see a lot of knockoffs of that today. Uh, but Baptist Patriots in the American Revolution. And so what better man than a man that lived here, you know, near all of this stuff to be able to write on Baptist Patriots and the American Revolution. And then he wrote a book called The Ancient British and Irish Churches including the life and ministry of St. Patrick. He also wrote The Papal System, From Its Origin to the Present Time. Now, John Dowling wrote, and this is just for your knowledge, he wrote the greatest book on Catholicism ever written. It's called A History of Romanism. And S.H. Ford was the place that I found out about that book, this book, that book has been forgotten, and I want to, I want to mention this just in the, in the middle of what we're doing here. S.H. Ford was the man that pastored in Missouri, and it was said of him that he did more in his life to defend the local church and to blow up and destroy the universal church theory than any man that ever lived in America. For 50 years, he put a periodical out, and every single periodical he put on every volume was destroying the universal church myth. Um, he had one of his uh, books, he actually did a commentary, Brother Bastion, you don't remember this because we had a little back and forth about, uh, and it was all good fun, uh, but uh, uh, Thomas Armitage, and he wrote an article about Armitage's history and did an assessment of it, but in that book he mentions John Dowling's history of Romanism. Um, I'd say this book will probably be right underneath it, amen, as far as, it's hard to beat Dowling, but this is, again, what Cathcart wrote was just very scholarly, and uh, then he wrote one called The Baptism of the Ages and of the Nations. And uh, these are some of the highlights of what he wrote. Of course, he was a prolific author. And uh, what's funny about it, every time we talk about one of these historians or authors, we mention their books. And then somebody says, did you see what's said of him here? And it mentions three other things he wrote that no one knows about or no one even included in the, ha in the article you may have read. So these guys just wrote their whole lives. And I uh, thank God for that. But I want to read to you the history of this man's very useful and blessed life. Brother Beller was here. He'd say I should call him the venerable William Cathcart. Amen. A baby son was born to James and Elizabeth Coosley Cathcart in the northern county of Londonbury in Ireland on November 18, 1826. James and Elizabeth were of Scotch ancestry, and the lad, William Cathcart, was raised in the Presbyterian Church, which predominated among the Scots. The boy grew up in the warmth of that heritage and was converted at an early age. However, as a young man of 19, William became convinced of believer's immersion and was thus baptized in January of 1846 by the Reverend R. H. Carson of Tubbermore. So here you have this 19-year-old boy. He throws off the faith of his fathers and he moves into the biblical faith as he begins to study the subject of baptism. That's Cathcart. As a young man, William Cathcart was impressed by the Lord that he was a chosen vessel to preach the gospel. He received his training in the University of Glasgow, Scotland, and furthered his theological studies in the Rawdon Baptist College in Yorkshire, England. Early in 1850, he was ordained as pastor in the Baptist Church of Barnsley near Sheffield, England. That same year, he married Eliza Caldwell for three years, Cathcart served that congregation as pastor. The political ideas of the day and his strong aversion to the state church sentiments influenced the man of God to emigrate to America. The Cathcart sailed for the United States in 1853 and arrived in America on November 18th of that year. The following month, Cathcart accepted the call of the Third Baptist Church in Groton on the Mystic River, Connecticut. Coming back to anybody that's been on those trips, Rotten Groton, amen, Mystic, right there where Valentine Whiteman was, all right? So you have that heritage of the Whitemans, all right? I won't get off on that rabbit trail, amen? But he was there in Groton. 
He then served the congregation uh, until April of 1857 and then accepted the call to the Second Baptist Church of Philadelphia. His ministry in the city of brotherly love lasted for 27 years. William Cathcart was a man of staunch conviction and treasured the distinctives of the Baptist cause. He was no stranger to controversy, but this conflict stemmed from firmness of faith and not from a distressing disposition. The man of God enjoyed history and began amassing biographies of Baptist preachers and compiling data. He became one of the greatest Baptist encyclopedists slash historians in the, in the denomination. In 1873, the University of Lewisburg, again, the connection there to Robert Lowry, the First Baptist Church of Philadelphia, you see all these attachments the more you begin to study. The University of Lewisburg, Pennsylvania honored Cathcart's efforts by conferring on him the Doctor of Divinity degree. On the retirement of Dr. Howard Malcolm as president of the American Baptist Historical Society in 1876, Dr. Cathcart was chosen to succeed him and led the society for eight years. So he was basically at the pinnacle of Baptist history here in America. In 1875, in the view of the first uh, centennial year of our national independence, the Baptist Ministerial Union of Pennsylvania appointed Dr. Cathcart to read a paper entitled, The Baptists in the Revolution, at their annual meeting. This paper met with much immediate approval that the Ministerial Union formed a special committee to work with Dr. Cathcart in publishing an enlarged edition of the essay. Thus, it was published as a book in 1876 and entitled The Baptist and the American Revolution. And as Paul Harvey would say, you now know the rest of the story, amen? In 1884, because of failing health, the man of God resigned his pastorate and retired. He continued to be active in Baptist interest through the remainder of his life. The greatest literary contribution made by Dr. Cathcart has to be his two volume set entitled The Baptist Encyclopedia. This monumental work first appeared in 1881 and contains invaluable information concerning many early Baptists in America as well as in England. Following his retirement from active service, the Lord allowed Cathcart many additional years and he passed into the presence of the Lord on July 8, 1908 at the age of 81. And so I submit for your consideration one of the greats, amen, of Baptist history. So if you love the Baptist history, a lot of times what we're, we're leaning on and digging into and learning from, and especially there's places where Cathcart, he's going to overlap and you're going to find information, other resources. But like when we went into Illinois, you have Dillo's book, and that's Harvest Time on the Prairie, that big, thick Illinois Baptist history. But Cathcart fills in all the blanks that Dillo never touches. So when you get into John Mason Peck and when you get into uh, S.H. Ford, and you get into the Missouri Baptist, there was a Missouri Baptist history written, I believe, by Kingsley. But again, uh, some of these states have scarce histories of their own, and Cathcart has the ability just to go in and fill in all those blanks. And so it may not mean much to you, but uh, I thank God. I thank God for anybody that preserved our heritage, wrote it down so we can read it today and enjoy it. Amen.